Good morning, everyone. Good, morning. Good to see you all on this Easter morning. Welcome to All Faiths Unitarian Congregation. Today we're celebrating the Holy Day of Easter. It's been a wonderful season where we have, with Ramadan and Passover and now Easter today, that we are going to be learning more about and knowing how to celebrate. My name is Diane Cartwright. And I'm very happy to be back up here. It's been a while since I have been served as worship associate, but I'm glad to be back. And this Easter is maybe a good time because I, whenever I get around to Easter, I always think about growing up and going with my mother to church. We'd spend the weeks before picking out our dresses, going to get our hat, getting the little white gloves, you know, having the little sh the white shoes. And going to church on Easter, my dad would always buy my mom an orchid corsage. And we go, and you know, the service itself, I have no clue of memories. But that <laughs> bonding with my mother uh, during that time was really, really special. Well, here at All Face, you'll find a diverse and inclusive spiritual community where we welcome people with many beliefs. Here, you can bring your whole self your full identity, your questioning mind, and your expansive heart. At All Face, we have more than one way of experiencing the world and understanding the sacred. At All Face, we also, every Sunday, say the same words because we believe them. We actually embrace the belief, our belief, that no matter who you are, wherever you are on your spiritual journey, and whomever you choose to love, you are truly welcome here. Is anyone visiting for the first or second time? Please raise your hand. Welcome, look at all these people. It's true, Easter draws the people out, holidays. <laughs> and I'm so, we're so glad you're here. And if you'd like to know anything more about All Face, you can see our membership director, Fran Way, who's going to be in the back after the service on the other side of the folding doors is our membership corner. Please join us in fellowship after the church as well, where we will have some birthday cake and coffee. We'd love to get to know you. Also, if you want to know more about us, you can go to the website, allfaceuu.org, and learn more about All Face and what we do. Next, we'll do some announcements, which should be on your order of service. Special ones to point out. Rainbow Connection Team will be held next Sunday after the service, not today. Next Saturday, we are having our Junk in the Trunk sale. I always think about Junk in the Trunk. Um, or Treasures in the Trunk, as it may be. And it will be from 8 a.m. to noon. This is a major fundraiser for All Face. Proceeds of our sales will be split 50-50 with All Face and the person who has got the junk in the trunk. And so if you'd like to sign up for a space and bring your unwanted junk or treasures to sell to people who will want them or need them, please do. Or 
If you just want to be a shopper and come and get the bargains, please come. It should be fun. It's a, such a clever idea, I think, when you have limited space to do it, junk in the trunk. You can see other upcoming events on page two or on the back of your order of service, as the case may be. And now, please rise in body or spirit as we sing together hymn 361, Enter, Rejoice, and Come In. Enter, rejoice, and come in. Enter, rejoice, and come in. Today will be a joyful day. Enter, rejoice, and come in. Open your ears to the song. Open your ears to the song. Today will be a joyful day. Enter, rejoice, and come in. Open your hearts, everyone. Open your hearts, everyone. Today will be a joyful day. Enter, rejoice, and come in. Change. Don't be afraid of some change. Today will be a joyful day. Better rejoice and come in. As Doug Cartwright comes forward, um, He's my husband, in case you haven't figured that out. <laughs> but he has never lit the chalice before. So I said, okay. <laughs> so as he comes forward to light the chalice, let us appreciate how our lives are enhanced by celebrating diverse religious holidays like Easter. Please join together in reciting the words in your order of service. As we light the chalice, May we May contemplate the many ways, ways in, which in which we can resurrect the spirit of Jesus in our own daily lives. We will not be having uh, the children's youth program today, so we'll go to Joy, Sorrows, and Gratitude with Joy. this time we invite you to come forward and share any personal joys, sorrows, or gratitude that you may have today. It's a good time to share our inner feelings and our joys. And I see one very special lady headed this way. <laughs> and uh, she is our hat lady. <laughs> Linda was doing our hospitality for many years, but she always came in her gator hat. But today, uh, <laughs> this is special. Thank you very much for the invitation, and it's great to see everybody here. All Faith has met my many needs for the years I've been honored to be in your congregation. Today is no different. If you look <laughs> in the back, of your order of service, the fourth item, if I come back on Friday, I can learn everything I need to know about taking care of my hat. <laughs> 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 what to feed my hat and keep, does it like sunshine or, you know, all those things I'm gonna learn <laughs> about my hat. So uh, again, thank you so much for being here every Sunday and participating in every way you can with the church and its many projects. I guess that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and we appreciate you. And I just want to share with you, the junk in the trunk idea was Linda's. On a way that we could do it. So thank you, Linda. Thank you. Dottie? Good morning. I'm Dottie Mayall, a member of All Faiths. Um, early March, um, I got a chance to go to Curacao and see a friend whom I hadn't seen in 50 years. We had a wow. reunion that day. 
And it was just amazing, wonderful to see her again. We had worked together in the early 70s in Rome, Italy. Good friendships are eternal. This is for Divi in Curacao. First of all, I'd like to say how awesome it is to see so many of my CUP sisters here today. Welcome. <laughs> uh, with the board retreat uh, on Friday, and this was my last action with the board, and it made me very emotional and happy to hear that we have a very cohesive vision for the future. And one of the most important things to our board members is that we grow our children and youth program. And I can't tell you how much it means to me that that's a priority here. It's going to be hard because the generation of young people now have suffered a lot of church harm at the hands of Christian nationalism. So the, you know, a lot of young people aren't really open to the idea of church, but I think you bunch of heretics can get to them. <laughs> <laughs> and Rachel, we thank you for your years of service as our vice president and for leading our CYP team. Yes. Regina. Good morning. I'm Regina Kilmartin, and I have a joy. I've had a rough couple of years. <laughs> I bought a condo that I thought I was getting an affordable deal on, and it's been a nightmare. Um, I've had pipes replaced, and I've had to have bathrooms gutted because of mold, and it's just been a mess. And uh, so my house is back together, and I'm cooking Easter dinner today, a Polish traditional Easter dinner for both of my sisters. They're never in Florida at the same time. And uh, my sister's stepson and his wife. So it's a happy Easter for me this year. Yay! Yay. We'd like this in appreciation for Regina, and we're glad that she's celebrating with her family today. And we're grateful that she's such an important part of the All Face family. Um, this is Sharon Gray, and just give a couple of joys uh, of some updates. Uh, Barbara Goolsby is still in hospice, um, but she's been taken off the terminal list. Oh, oh yay! Mm -hmm. Um, they're going to be working with her a little bit and see if they can get her more mobile or ready to go somewhere else. Um, other update is on Jeff and Eileen Moran. Some of you know they've been displaced, at least down here. They still have a place in Pennsylvania. They came down in their RV um, and they're staying at another location, but Old Bridge Village is where their manufactured home is, which was totally gutted. It got flooded. and. Uh, They've got a friend from Colorado who's a builder who's out there and working to put the whole damn thing back together <laughs> again. <laughs> so uh, hopefully soon. They were shopping for cabinets yesterday. We hold them in our hearts. I'm lighting this candle for Sadie. Sadie was our all-face dog. <laughs> Lived 16 years, two months and five days with the Cartwrights. And Sadie would come to our services and sometimes to our finance meetings. <laughs> and you know, Sadie would be there and it was a calming presence. She had a pledge to And too. I shared <laughs> With Doug and Diane, a sermon I gave in 2016, do dogs go to heaven? And my answer was yes. Mm -hmm. And so we know that Sadie is part of that cosmic consciousness of love, which is eternal. And we're so grateful that you always shared Sadie with us. Sadie and I'm lighting this candle for all of you who have joys and sorrows in your hearts. Now if you would please close your eyes, take a deep breath, and let us turn our hearts and minds to today's service 
and contemplate our blessings. Please rise in body or spirit as we sing together hymn number one, two, three, Spirit of Life. Mike, Mike. Why I celebrate Easter? People ask me why I celebrate Easter, even though I'm not a Christian or a believer in the physical resurrection of Jesus. I celebrate because I believe it to be a spiritual metaphor, one of the most powerful and heartening of spiritual metaphors for our own resurrection to a new life. Every day offers us yet again the chance to experience our own divinity and spiritual transformation. The stone is rolled away and the tomb is left empty every time we acknowledge our own Christ reality, or whatever name you choose to use, and the Christ reality of all beings and things as part and parcel of the ultimate divine mystery in which we live and move and have our being, or as Wayne Robinson saw, always said, the mystery before which we all stand. It's a good day to reflect and to consider our own need to die to self, not in sorrow, but in anticipation of what is to come. <coughs> between us by the cross you came and broke them down you broke them down there were chains around us by your grace you came no longer bound no longer bound you called me out of the grave you called me into the light you called me and my heart came alive your love is greater your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Feel the darkness shaking, all the dead 
are coming back to life, back to life. Hear the song awaken, all creation singing, we're alive, cause we're alive. You called me out of the grave, you called me into the light, you called my name and then my heart came alive. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. And what a love we found, death can't hold us down. We shouted out, we're alive, cause you're alive. What a love we found, death can't hold us down. We shout it out, we're alive, cause you're alive. You called me out of the grave, you called me into the light, you called my name and then my heart came alive. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger. Today's reading is Easter Prayer by Kathleen Rollins, the UU minister. Spirit of life, we come together this Easter morning to rejoice in the ongoing song of life that is within us and around us. In this season of renewal, of life bursting into bloom or song, the hidden beauty of nature preparing to unfold, remind us that we too have a hidden inner beauty, reflecting the image of your creative power. Yet for all the beauty that lives in us and among us, we doubt its realization. We question our talent, our beauty, our abilities, our value. We become cynical about love, jaded about peace, less hopeful about the future. We roll stones across entrances, build fences instead of gates, close fists instead of open arms. Spirit of resurrection, Remind us of the power of hope to triumph over fear, the power of love to prepare over the horrors of hate, the potential for peace to be victorious over hostility. We pray for all that is still possible, but not yet fulfilled. Spirit of life, as we feel you flowing and pulsing within, we pray for a courageous and joyous faith, empowering us to become our finest and truest selves empowering us to see your image in our brothers and sisters, empowering us to participate with you in the creation of a new time of life in which love, justice, beauty, and peace are abundantly available to all. For this we pray. Amen. Amen. Please rise and body your spirit as we sing together hymn number 269, Lo, the day of days is here.
want to hear and I'm happy we have some people here today who are moving when we sing. <laughs> I've been working on that for years. That's one of the things I like you know if you go to the Black Baptist Church they get up there and they move and they celebrate and they have a sense of hallelujah and, and it's so good to have that spirit with us today as we celebrate Easter. The quote at the top of your order of service is by Mahatma Gandhi. Live like Jesus did and the world will listen. When Gandhi was living in South Africa, he became acquainted with the Bible and the stories of Jesus. And he was greatly influenced by the Sermon on the Mount. Today, we are considering the holy day of Easter. Christianity borrowed many of its holidays and practices from earlier faiths. Easter first started out as a celebration of the vernal equinox, a time when all of nature is awakened from the slumber of winter and the cycle of renewal begins. The word Easter <coughs> comes from Anglo-Saxon pagans who celebrated this time of rebirth by invoking Eoster or Ostara, the goddess of spring, the dawn and fertility. We are familiar with the resurrection of Jesus presented in the New Testament and Christian traditions, but there are other stories about the life and death of Jesus. When I lived in Pakistan, I heard local legends about Jesus and Mary. There was a tradition that the missing years in the life of Jesus from the age of 12 to the age of 30 were spent in Kashmir. That was a time when Buddhism prevailed in the Himalayan region and books have even been written about the parallel sayings of Jesus and Buddha. And some of the legends say that Jesus did not die on the cross, but was taken down before he died. Then he spoke with Mary Magdalene and his apostles before his ascent into heaven, which was his return to the mountains of Kashmir, where he had died and is buried at the Rosabal Shrine in Srinagar. There are claims that Jesus chose Kashmir because Kashmiris are considered as one among the 10 missing tribes of Israel out of 12 Jewish tribes who later settled in the new countries, especially along the Silk Route in Afghanistan and Kashmir and they were driven out of Israel by the Assyrians in around 700 BC. 
It's considered that the Pathans and part of the Afghans are actually part of that Jewish uh, diaspora, and they come from a Jewish heritage, not South Asian. And his mother married, had accompanied him, and died along the way, and is buried at the shrine of my Mari Deastad in Murray, which is a beautiful little town in the foothills of the mountains in Pakistan, where people often go on holidays in the summer. It's a beautiful place. There's another legend that Jesus did not die on the cross, but he even went to Japan, where he lived a long life and was buried. So there are a variety of viewpoints about Jesus and his resurrection. The important thing to realize, though, is that there is a universal human aspiration for the importance of rising up to a new and better life, of transcendence to a new realm of existence. And that is what enlightenment is all about. That is what it means to be born again. That is what salvation and discovering the kingdom of God on earth means to those who have had a direct experience of the spirit of life entering into their souls. Even among the most hard-hearted and cynical people, there does seem to be an inner need to reconnect on some holy days. I recently read an interesting article about CEOs. No, not the chief executive officers, but those people who attend worship services on Christmas and Easter only. <laughs> CEO. You know some of those people? I think it's pretty easy to understand why so many people go to churches on Christmas. It's a strong cultural practice involving families and communities. We feel need to come together in the darkness of the winter season to celebrate and to share what we have with others. But what about Easter? Why is it that when Easter comes, people who have not attended a religious function since Christmas feel motivated to get up, have their Easter eggs, and then head off to a church service. What is it about this season of the year, or the concept of resurrection after death, that is appealing even to secular-minded people and non-believers? Springtime is a season for rebirth. Throughout the world, for thousands of years, spring is celebrated as a time of joy. Birds lay eggs in their nests. Baby rabbits are seen frisking about the earth, and they bring Easter eggs to our children. <laughs> Leaves are emerging on the branches of trees. Tulips and iris are bursting forth from the ground announcing that the dark days, cold days of death are behind us and we can rejoice again. Especially if we are intimately connected with nature, we feel a deep sense of the sacred as we see all these representatives of the spirit of life calling us to join in singing the day of days is here, alleluia. And then, too, we seek a kind of reassurance that loved ones and puppy dogs who have died have not completely gone away. We welcome a message that death is not final, that there is a kind of continuing presence of precious love and intimacy that can never be lost, even after the death of the body. For me, the message of Easter is that life 
and love are universal and eternal. Life and love are universal and eternal. It is a time to appreciate we can live and love completely with trust and joy that the benevolent universe supports us. All that is and all that will ever be are in a constant process of rebirth and recombination into new and magical forms of being, manifesting the mystery of creation throughout all places and time. Easter is a time for a direct experience of intimacy with all that is. Easter calls us to recognize and embrace a deeper sense of the sacred. Easter calls us to have a genuine reverence for all living things. Easter calls us to gather together in communities of love and joy like we do here at All Faiths. Easter calls us to cherish our children by giving them special treats. And it is a time to rediscover Jesus. Unfortunately, because we Unitarians do not have a literal belief in the Trinity, and because we may reject the concept of Jesus being the only Son of God, some of us may turn away from him completely. We fail to see Jesus as a revolutionary who stood up against the corruption and hypocrisy of powerful leaders of state and religion. We fail to recognize the importance of the Sermon on the Mount. We fail to see the significance of the myth and metaphor of Jesus crucified and resurrected. For thousands of years, we humans have had many myths about gods who died and rose again because these stories resonate with an innate yearning to transcend old ways of selfishness and greed and to rise up in selfless love and service to all. Jesus showed us how we could all live as proactive and creative participants of universal and eternal divinity. Mary Magdalene went to the graveyard and discovered the stone had been removed from the entrance to the tomb. Mary, the devoted and loyal friend and follower of Jesus, was the first to experience the presence of Jesus on that first Easter morning. And she was told to share the good news. She went forth and did so because she had sincere devotion and complete trust that his life and his message would go on to inspire others to be more inclusive, more just, more compassionate, more caring, and more loving. You can know this. Jesus is risen when his inspiring messages do become ingrained in our daily lives, in our decisions, our choices, and actions, when we love our neighbors as ourselves, when we can forgive our enemies, when we feed the poor and tend the sick, when we care for others and share what we have with them, when we embrace and support marginalized people, and when we can courageously speak truth to power. Consider the possibilities inherent in this awesome vision. Perhaps we will experience a death of our own big egos and self-centeredness to discover and give birth to a newfound universal identity, one that connects us intimately 
with the interdependent web of being of which we are all a part. So today, I invite you, roll away the stones from your hearts and minds, resurrecting Jesus in our daily lives. That is our message today. Resurrecting Jesus in our daily lives. That is the sacred vision, the challenge and opportunity that presents to each one of us. Spirit of life, come unto me. Live like Jesus did. May it be so. Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah. That was phenomenal. I feel so enlightened myself. Thank you, Joyce. We appreciate your generous donations, which support our dedicated staff, beautiful facilities, inspiring services, such as this one, interesting activities, and social outreach at all faiths. If you are with us on our live stream service, you can mail checks or visit our website allfaceuu.org and make a donation. But first, before we do that, we have a tradition here at All Face where we begin with a joke because as we learned from C.J. McGregor, humor makes us generous. So here goes, get ready to groan. One Easter not too long ago, a father and son were in a car together because the father was teaching the son to drive. They were going down the road when all of a sudden, a rabbit jumped out in front of the car. The son swerved and hit the brakes. And he just started, was huffing and puffing, he was just panicky. And he turned to his father and said, oh my gosh, I ruined Easter almost. I could have killed the Easter bunny. And his father turned to him, it's okay, son, don't worry about it. You missed him by a hair. <laughs> Our morning offering will now be taken. Down the Via Dolorosa in Jerusalem that day, the soldiers tried to clear the narrow streets, but the crowd pressed in to see the man condemned to die on Calvary. He was bleeding from a beating there were stripes across his back and he wore a crown of thorns upon his head and he bore with every step the scorn of those who cried out for his death down the via dolorosa called the way of suffering like a lamb came the Messiah, Christ the King. But he chose to walk that road out of his love for you and me. Down the Via Dolorosa, all the way to Calvary. Por la Via Dolorosa, triste día en Jerusalén, los soldados le abrían paso a Jesús. Mas la gente se acercaba para ver a que llevaba aquella cruz. Por la Via Dolorosa, quien la vía es dolor, 
como oveja vino Cristo, Rey Señor, y fue Él quien quiso ir por su amor, por ti, por mí, por la vía dolorosa al Calvario a morir. The blood that would cleanse the souls of all men made its way through the heart of Jerusalem. the way of suffering like the lamb came the messiah christ the king but he chose to walk that road out of his love for you and me down the via dolorosa all the way to calvary Carlos for the beautiful and heartfelt music. <laughs> Our closing words are by Patrick O'Neill, good Irishman. <laughs> Easter is an impossible story written for everyone who has ever felt the sting of death and wishes for something more. Easter is a story for anyone who loves life so much that they pray for more life to follow. Easter is a story for people who can envision a loving divinity which will not be conquered by evil. It's a story of love that never dies, of happy endings in a tragic world, of miracles, of faith rewarded and vision restored and hope justified. That's what Easter is. Alleluia. Now please rise and join in singing hymn number 268, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. strong and voices sing 
we thank Joyce Rame for her Easter message today. We thank Carlos for the music, Joe Gayton, our sexton, Joyce Schaefer for our flowers. Aren't they beautiful? Nicole was seen and Frank Geltner for our hospitality and our friendly greeters, of course. Ed Elrod on sound. It's good to be connected in whatever way that we can be. As we extinguish our catal, ta yeah, yeah. <laughs> as we extinguish the chalice, and Doug comes forward to do that, please repeat the words or follow the words in your order of service. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the power of commitment. These we carry in our hearts and out into the world. Please join us for birthday cake, coffee, conversation in the social hall after the service. Happy Easter. Happy Easter.